Hey guys, this is Ratter Tatter. And this is Chill Pill. <laughs> and it is late. We are tired, but we decided screw that. We're going to play some more perfect dates. We'll get all that green in that early Mayan yeah, flask. Look at all that. That is pretty high up there. Well, it's only 36% so, done, though. Right? That looks like way more than 36% done. That's, that's way more. That's, that's way more. That's ridiculous. But we're going to do some recon. Wait. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, we're going to do some recon. Wait! Recon number six! What's Can't stop thinking about important, fragrant, what, pink letters Zane mentioned. What's recon two? Why is that like... That's eleven. Oh, eleven. Okay. There's a shipment of supplies delivered and I have to get it all unloaded. Maybe I can get some info while I'm there. I want to find out about those pink, fragrant letters. That was like in one of the first couple of episodes that we did that we found out about those. Well, then let's do that. Let's do it. Let's do that. Let's see what Zane's got up his zany sleeves. Uh, it's in Zane. <laughs> I run through the sequence one more time. I know it by heart, but I'm noivous. Noivous. I've been watching long enough to be sure that the routine is just like clockwork. No deviations. Well, apart from one, and I've made that work for me. So the boat arrives at 1300 hours. Zane, oh, hi Banjo. <laughs> He's knocking into your microphone. Zane always, uh-oh. He, <laughs> he found the, uh, the duck from the duck game plushie. Oh. He <clears throat> moved on though. Uh, Zane always alone talks to the older man, Bob, who hands over the post while the younger of the two, Joe, loads up the dolly with boxes of supplies. Zane puts the envelopes, never more than three, into the breast pocket of his jacket. That solves the mystery of why he always overdresses whenever the boat comes in. So he has a pocket, I guess? He then wheels, because regular clothes can't have pockets, yeah. especially <laughs> not jeans or anything. Yeah. He then wheels the dolly to the mess tents and unloads the food supplies, then to the lab and unloads the medical supplies, then to the storage hut where he unloads the remaining packages and leaves the dolly. Next, he goes to Professor Popper's tent for some of that good loving. <laughs> if the professor is in, he hands over two of the envelopes, keeping the third, his puzzler, in his jacket pocket. Because he likes them. Um, if, crosswords. however, the professor isn't in his tent, Zane makes his way back down to his chair on the dock, drapes his jacket over the back of it, and spends the afternoon on his puzzles before going back again in the evening to deliver the professor's mail. He never lets the envelopes out of his jacket pocket or the jacket out of his sight. So, my only opportunity would be to pickpocket the security guard when he takes his jacket off. Jacket off. <laughs> jacket off. <laughs> but that relies Thanks on Professor Popper on not being in his tent. Jacket off. <laughs> Luckily, I'm insured with... <laughs> Ensured, with the help of my feline friends, that the professor will be held up during his out-of-grounds inspection. Mm. Usually, Papa mm. just meanders around the inner Espionage. perimeters of the base camp area and checks that all is well. Most days, everything is, but today, Kibbles and Trixie have staged a little rumpus that will engage him for just enough time to miss Zany's delivery. Zany's? Zany. <laughs> he is, of course, sat in his usual place, jacket draped over his chair. Hi there, Zane. 127. I suppose we're on first name terms now. I, I don't remember what Dr. Fieldu was. Um, eight. I don't no, know. No, it was 100 something. Probably 125, right? I have a little something for you. Zane frowns, but does not look at me. His eyes are instead where they always are, on his crossword. I've made you a puzzle. He eyes me skeptically. A crossword to be exact. It's pretty tricky if I do say so myself. They're all three letter words because those are all the words I know. <laughs> I created... <laughs> <laughs> I created the puzzle using all of the cat's net general knowledge. 
Major McMurphy thought of some particularly treacherous teasers, while Kibbles and Trixie offered some great obscure pop culture questions. Snooty Booty was mostly just trying to get cat treats out of my pocket, of the course. bitch. <laughs> I hand the paper to Zane, who's still frowning. This dick's having a whale of a time? Is this a joke? Who you calling it, dick? Oh, <laughs> it gets harder. Like my dick. Ah. Zane peers over the crossword. Why did you take this for me? Make. Make this for me. <laughs> well, you know how bored I get, and I like you, Zane. I, th I throw up in my mouth a little bit. Zane breaks <laughs> into the first smile I've seen on his face, although small and slightly uncomfortable looking. I don't have anything for you. Your smile is enough. Yes, he's warming up to me. This plan is going spiffingly. Spiffingly. Oh, don't worry about that. All I want is for you to complete it. I, might, I make my hands into a hot shape while Zane is distracted. I feel stupid, but McMurphy insisted that it, that would be my signal for him to strike. And sure enough, along he slinks, cool as anything. He winds his feline body between Zane's legs. Unnoticed, Zane's tongue is now sticking out and his shoulders are hunched in concentration. You stuck already? Idiot. I dart <laughs> a look at McMurphy to get ready to make his move. He throws me a disconcerting wink. It's not that hard. Just this one is archetypal counterpart to Yandi Ray? What is Yandi Ray? I don't know. Yeah. Oh, yes, that's quite niche. 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 Thanks for that one, Kibbles. While I engage Zane, I can see that McMurphy has already reached up as though stretching against the chair and nudged his nose inside the inside breast pocket of the jacket. Oi! Shoo, get out of it! I see McMurphy scamper off, and my heart sinks. Anyway, I'll check back later, see how you're getting on with it. Zane grunts in response. I walk back dejectedly to where McMurphy and I had agreed to meet after our mission was over, and suddenly, my spirits lift at the sight of a little pink corner peeking out from under the designated rock. Yes. Oh yeah. We got it. McMurphy, you're a star. There's no end to my talents. I snatch up the envelope, saying goodbye to McMurphy, and head to the privacy of my tent. Yeah, I, yeah. I examine my trophy while the kettle boils. I'm touched by the pretty pink envelope and delicate fragrance and feel suddenly embarrassed. Am I prying into the professor's love life? What has got dead to be? Huh? You keep pulling on the Velcro. You're oh. going to hear it. What has gotten into me? Getting notions of secrets goings on and subter subterfuge? What is subterfuge? I called it almost subterfuge. <laughs> I'm about to put the letter back when I'm overwhelmed by curiosity. After all, I am turning into a cat, so, uh, you know, curiosity killed me. I wonder who the professor's secret love could be. What are they like? Woman? Man? Other? Other? A cat? Before I can contain myself, I have steamed open the flap and peek inside. Steamed open? It's like they know how to do this kind of thing. <laughs> it's not at all what I expect, and my previous suspicions come flooding back. This paper is in stark contrast to the pretty pink wrapping. It is a tight message on white paper. Percival. Percival. I have been informed of your latest subject. I'd rather hear about such things from you personally. It would not be wise to take my silence from author for authorization. Please keep this in mind for future transactions. I will let this indiscretion slide, but if it ever repeated, I will have no choice but to deal with you the way I dealt with 124. Oh, so if Dr. Filgu is 125... Then what, uh, whatever happened to the person before them was pretty significant. Must be. As for the subject, case study six is a is aesthetic. Aesthetic? Like aesthetic. Oh. Uh, please act accordingly. P. 
has been unsuccessful. Void any further instigation. Investigation. I wonder oh. if a cat is gonna die tomorrow. Lab 09 has received the newest batch. Protocol to begin on the 8th. Finally, I trust your new assistant has arrived and is proving to be more helpful than the previous one. We seem to have a run of bad luck in that particular area. <laughs> As you know, I do not abide bad luck and will expect a reversal of fortune post haste. Faithfully yours. Seven? Seven. Double O Seven. James Bond. <laughs> License to kill. Which Lic apparently they do a bunch of here. If License you to cat. Decide not to turn into a cat with your cat lover. Tell so we let's, have let's, a little bit of time. Let's uh, let's finish the day by resting. Yeah, we'll rest up. Hopefully, it does something more interesting than just you took a nap. Let's bake <laughs> That's brownies. That's all we've been getting lately. Bake brownies. <laughs> let's see. Oh my God! You why? had a lovely nap and wake up feeling Come revitalized. On, we want something fun uh, and trippy like we've had before. Your energy has been restored. Magic. <sighs> lame. That is pretty lame. But we also don't have enough time to continue. We don't have on. enough time to do a new one. This is gonna be a short episode today. <sighs> so, I guess if you have enjoyed this episode of espionage with kitties, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Comment down below on um, what you think is going on with the uh, helper number one twenty four. Who is seven? <laughs> Who is number Test seven? Subject seven. And subscribe so you can continue on this adventure with us. And go ahead and sleep tight. And don't let the test subjects bite. And don't let the secret letters bite. McMurphy is best cat. I don't know. I might like Ravenpaw. Gotta Maybe. See, gotta see what we kind of personality of Ravenpaw has. Seems pretty... Lethargic and you should just make her like a, uh, a goth. Yeah, I mean that's kind of what it was. Yeah, just like the lethargic, emotionless voice. Uh, life is pain. <laughs>